Hello everyone, this is Brad Tallis with NextGen Solutions, and welcome to Banter with Brad. In this series, I answer questions and topics sent to me from you, the viewers. I'll show different ways to approach the problem and share some tips and methods that hopefully will help you on your future projects. If you want your question or topic to appear on an upcoming episode of Banter with Brad, please email them to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com. In this episode of Banter with Brad, the question came in from Bill B. And he said, I always have problems fully constraining my sketches. Can you show how you would create this drive pulley making sure that the sketch is fully constrained. So yes, let's take a look on how to do this. Okay, I'm gonna start by creating a new component and let's just call it drive pulley. And then I can create a new sketch and I'm gonna just do it on this front face right here. First thing I'm gonna do is verify that I'm in the correct units, which I am, according to the drawing is in inches, so I want my design to be in inches. And then I'm gonna start by creating some center lines. So over here in my sketch palette, I'll click on center line, and I'm just gonna draw a horizontal center line and a vertical center line. And the reason for this is we're gonna use these center lines for adding dimensions and for mirroring um, the sketch. So now what I'm gonna do is change my line type to normal. And I'm just gonna kinda quickly mock up the shape. So I'm just gonna kinda draw the shape according to what I see on the drawing. Uh, so I'll do something like this, and then maybe just a little vertical section there. Uh, and what I basically did was, uh, again, looking at the drawing here, I just drew across, up, across, up, across, and up. I'm not worrying about any of the fillets or chamfers right now. I'm just doing the basic shape. Now, you'll notice that all of my lines are blue, and that means they are not constrained. And if I were to expand open the sketches, we can see the little pencil icon on my sketch. And that also means that it's not fully constrained. We need to keep editing it to, uh, to fully constrain it. Once it's fully constrained, that pencil icon will turn to a lock, like everything is locked down. So I've constrained it using some of the automatic constraints, such as perpendicular. You can kind of see all of these perpendicular icons on here. So now I'm going to start constraining it by using dimensions. And one of the neat tips is because I used a center line here, if I click on the center line first, and then I click on like this line here, you'll notice it's creating a diameter dimension, which is what's on the drawings. So for example, this one is 0.75. And when I hit enter, you'll notice my screen or the sketch got a little bit smaller. And that is due to a preference that I have turned on. Let me bring up my preferences. I'll go under design and you'll notice scale entire sketch at first dimension. And I have that turned on. So what that's doing is when I add this first dimension, it's kind of scaling everything else down to match. Okay, so I'm gonna keep adding my dimensions here. So I'll go ahead and do like the overall height um, that was uh, six inches according to the drawing. So you can kind of see that. And then maybe I'll just work my way up. Let's do this guy. It's supposed to be 1.75. And I'll do this one here. And that's supposed to be um, 5.625. Okay, and you'll notice that some of the lines are turning black because we're constraining them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do some of the width. So I'll select my center line. I'll select this line here. Again, notice it's doing a diameter dimension. Um, and this is supposed to be 1.75. And then same thing with this. I'll go ahead and 
place that dimension. That's supposed to be 0 0.5. And then one more I'll do here. And this is going to be an interesting dimension. Let me bring the drawing back so we can take a look at this. Um, so it is slightly narrower than the 1.75. In fact, it's 0 0.063 on each side. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of math here, but we'll let Fusion do that for me. So what I'm going to do for, for this dimension here is I'm going to do the 1.75 and then I'm going to subtract 0 0.063 but it's on both sides so I'm going to divide that by 2. So let's take a look at how I would do that. So here I am in my dimension and I'm going to type in 1.75 then I need to subtract the 0 0.063 but I need to divide that by 2 so what I would recommend in this example is I'm going to put this in parentheses. So we can see now it's going to do 1.75 minus whatever this result is. So it's going to take 0 0.063 and divide it by 2. And then watch what happens when I hit enter. It gives me that 1.719 dimension. Okay, now as I'm looking at this, I can see that um, my sketch is all black. Okay, um, I need to add in the curve that goes across the top. Uh, let me bring the drawing back really quick so you can kind of see it's a crowned surface and it's a radius of six. Okay, so how would I go about doing that? Well, I'm going to create a circle over here, but you'll notice it's asking for a diameter dimension. So I'm just going to draw a circle and I'm just going to click. I don't care what size it is right now. Then when I create a dimension on this circle, again, you'll notice it's a diameter dimension. But if I right mouse click, I can change it to radius. And now it's giving me a radius dimension. And let's set that to be six. And you'll notice the circle gets really big. Okay. I'm going to sort of drag it kind of down here in place, you know, so it's fairly close. So what I want to do now is I want to make this circle be perfectly in line with this origin. So I'm going to use a horizontal vertical. I'll click on that point there and that point there. And you can see the circle kind of shifted over a little bit. Now I want the circle to be touching that point. So I'm going to use a coincident. And I can click on the circle and I can click on this point. And you can see it's still lined up vertically and it's touching that point right there. So that's how I went about creating the crowned surface. Now, I'm going to go ahead and extend this center line up a little bit so we can kind of see that a little bit better. And we can kind of see this profile in here now. Now, I want to go ahead and trim this big circle that I don't need. So I'm going to click on the trim command. And I'll go ahead and just click over here. You can kind of see it's turning red, but it's keeping this little segment right there. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And you might get a warning saying some constraints or dimensions were removed during this operation. Okay, I take a look at this sketch and it looks like everything is fully constrained. I can see that all of the lines are black. However, my sketch still shows the pencil icon and not the lock icon. So it's saying that it's not fully constrained. And I think this is where um, Bill's question came from. So why is it not fully constrained? Well, it actually goes back to the original center lines that we created. You'll notice that I can move the length of them up and down. So I'm going to just quickly throw a dimension on here. And this really, this dimension doesn't really matter to my design. So I'm just going to say four for that one. And let's throw a dimension here, and let's just make that 1.5. And now 
you'll notice that the sketch has the lock icon. So if you have a sketch that looks like it's fully constrained, but it's still showing the pencil icon, maybe throw a dimension or two on some of your uh, center lines if you're using them to make sure that everything on your sketch is fully constrained. Okay, now what I want to do is I've drawn half of this, so let's flip it to the other side. So I'm going to use the mirror command. What are the objects? I'm just going to kind of draw a selection box around my sketch. And what's my mirror line? That's this vertical center line. I'll say OK. And we can see that it's now still fully constrained. Now, what I want to do is I want to revolve um, this top part up here and this bottom part down here, but I don't want to revolve this middle rib section. And if I bring the drawing back up, you can kind of see why. So if, if I use this, you know, this shaded profile you see right here, that would turn as a solid, and I'd have to draw in some geometry to remove like these pockets, and I don't want to do that. So what I'm basically going to do is revolve this outer profile and this inner profile, and then we're going to come back and add in the rib later. So I'm just going to add in some geometry here. I'm just going to draw a line straight across, and you'll notice it's black, which means it's fully constrained. I'll do the same thing here, and I've now kind of broken this into um, some different profile regions. I have that one, and I have that one. Okay, so I'll go ahead and finish my sketch. I'll say Revolve. It already knows what the profile is. What's the axis? I'll select this axis right here, and you can see it's revolving this curved upper profile, and it's revolving this cylinder down here. Okay, now I need to reuse my sketch, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn that sketch back on. And now I want to create this rib. So I'm going to go ahead and select these two profiles. And according to the drawing, it's 0.5 inches wide, and it's also 0.5 inches in this direction. So I'm just going to right mouse click and say extrude. Now if I start to extrude, you're going to notice a couple things happen. First of all, you see it kind of turns red, and that's because this profile is actually cutting into this curved section here. But I also want it to go symmetrically. I want it to go in both directions. So under this direction pull-down, I'm going to say symmetric. And then you'll notice when I do that, I get a measurement. It says half length or whole length. Well, I know that the whole length is 0.5. So I'm going to click on whole length and type in 0.5. And so it's basically going 0.25 in that direction and 0.25 in that direction for a whole length of 0.5. And then lastly, I don't want it to cut. I'm actually going to change it to join. And you'll notice by doing that, it's going to create this curved surface for me automatically. However, it's not going to do it correctly down here because my profile ends right up here, this kind of this horizontal line right here, and it's that's just going straight out. But we'll fix that here in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and let's expand open our bodies. And because this is touching this cylinder and it's touching that cylinder, it's all one body but I want to fix this problem down here. So I'm going to use the extrude command. So I'll say extrude. I'll click on that face there, and I'll click on this face here. And instead of just dragging down into the cylinder, I can say, instead of a distance, I'm going to say, go to an object. What's the object? I'll pick the cylinder. And you can see how it's now extruding those flat faces 
down to the cylindrical face and it creates that nice curved surface there and it's going to join it together. It's still all one body. Okay, so we now have this one rib and if I take a look at the drawing, we can see that it says, you know, 0.125 um, fillets all the way around. Uh, same thing here, we can kind of see 0.125. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on this one rib, and then we're just going to pattern that. So I'll go ahead and select a rib, uh, an edge and say fill it, and let's say 0.125. And then I'm going to select these other three edges that I can see. Now there's one more edge I want to select, but I can't see it. I could rotate around, but here's a neat little trick. I'm going to hold down my control key because I want to control my selection. And I know that there's this edge right here, and that intersects with the vertical edge back here. So all I have to do is kind of follow this edge here until I can see that edge. And there it is. And I can click through the part to get that back corner or that back edge. I'll go ahead and say OK, and then I'll add in the 0.125 that goes all the way around. So I'll say fillet, 0.125. We can see it creates that nice fillet there. And I'll go ahead and do that on that edge up there also. Because of this tangent chain, I only had to select one edge and it went all the way around. It selected all the tangent edges. I'll say OK, and we're left with something that looks like this. Now I can use the pattern command. So I'm going to say create pattern circular pattern. And instead of bodies, I'm going to change it to features. Now what do I want to pattern? Well, I need to do the extrude of the, uh, the rib. I also want to pattern the, the four fillets that go around it, and I also want to pattern the fillets that go um, along the top and the bottom. So I just selected these three features in the timeline. It's asking for an axis. I'll go ahead and select like the cylindrical face right there, and we get a nice preview of what that's going to look like. I'll go ahead and increase the quantity to 5. And I'm going to change the compute type from adjust to optimized. Now, why do I do that? Well, adjust basically means it's going to grow or shrink accordingly if it needs to. And I don't want it to change shape at all in this case, so I'm going to change it to Optimize, and it creates identical copies by patterning feature faces. And that's kind of what we're doing is these, you know, features is what we're patterning. So I'm going to say Optimized. I'll say OK, and we now have a pattern feature, and... All that's left, according to the drawing, is to chamfer these two edges. And they are 0 0.06. I'll say OK. And we are done with our part. And the key thing here, the main question was creating a fully constrained sketch. So hopefully you learned some tips on how to do that. And then hopefully you learned some tips on how you would go about creating this model simply um, using like the revolve, creating the rib, uh, and then you know extruding it to the curved surface, and then just patterning those features around. So hopefully you all learned something new with that tip. If you want your question or topic on the next banter with Brad, please email them to me at Brad Tallis at nextgensolutions.com. And I look forward to seeing you on the next Banter with Brad. Thank you.